Hey everybody, what's going on? I'm Greg Sussman, joined today by Jim Sonis of FanDuel. We seem to tell us about the players whose stocks are rising after week eight. What's going on, Jim? I'm pretty good, Greg, because not only do we get Christian McCaffrey back in week number nine, but also Dalvin Cook became a, a bell cow once again. I, I kind of like having the situations where we can look at running back and feel good about spending up. We're not spending up for guys who used to be backups. We're spending up for legit studs. So I think things are rounding into shape as we head into week number nine. I feel pretty good about that. The Vikings were not impressed with what they saw from Alexander Madison, so it became just the Dalvin Cook show once again in Week 8. He was phenomenal, as were quite a few other players. We'll get to a couple right now. We begin in Baltimore with J.K. Dobbins. It's interesting that you focus on J.K. Dobbins because it was Gus Edwards yesterday that had 16 carries, which is almost as many as Mark Ingram has seemingly had his entire Ravens career. And both Edwards and Dobbins were effective yesterday. Dobbins finished with 12.6 FanDuel points. And you like him and see his stock rising. How come? Two things. It's hard to score points when you're on the sidelines, which Gus Edwards was for 66% of the snaps, but also because we know that J.K. Dobbins is going to be the pass catching back in this offense. And that doesn't mean as much because it's the Ravens, they don't pass that much, but I just feel better about a guy who I know has two sources of upside rather than just one, which is what we get with Gus Edwards. Gus Edwards is fine for season long, but for daily fantasy, I want a guy like J.K. Dobbins, who I think has better odds of catching a pass. Now with J.K. Dobbins, although the stock is up, it's kind of similar to the DeAndre Swift discussion a couple weeks ago, where it's up, but there are still some concerns here. The good thing is that, again, a 66% snap rate for Dobbins, that is great. Easily outsnapped Gus Edwards, and he's been insanely effective so far this year. And that could lead to more volume, even when Mark Ingram is healthy, could lead to more volume relative to Gus Edwards, too. So those are really good things for Dobbins. As mentioned, he, catch pa he catches passes, too. So that's the good. The bad is that he is still splitting work with Gus Edwards. The team just lost their left tackle, Ronnie Stanley, for the entire season. That downgrades the expected efficiency of this entire offense. And he can lose goal line works, not just Edwards, but also Lamar Jackson. So the stock is up. Gus Edwards, or sorry, J.K. Dobbins is trending up, and he is now a guy we can consider in DFS, whereas when Mark Ingram was around, that was obviously not, not the case. And at $5,300, J.K. Dobbins is in play for week number nine. But it's not a situation where he is a big no-brainer right now. Despite the offense, despite the talent he has shown, there are still some legit question marks here. So I think that we can start to use J.K. Dobbins' daily fantasy. He's not a core play by any means. He is not a cash game play despite the low salary. But he is at least on the radar now, whereas he was not previously. And as a result of that, his stock is up. And I wouldn't be shocked if his stock continues to rise with how good he has been. Let's not forget that draft capital, obviously, that Baltimore invested in J.K. Dobbins back during the NFL draft this past spring. Mark Ingram, at some point, will no longer be there. Gus Edwards is going to have his role with 66% uh, of the snaps for J.K. Dobbins on Sunday. Hopefully, it leads to big things in Week 9 and further on. The Ravens, after that loss, are going to have to do something a little bit different. We'll see what that is. Hopefully, it means more J.K. Dobbins going forward. Up next, the Chicago Bears pushed the Saints to overtime yesterday in a weird game where Nick Foles did not look good for most of it before somehow, like I said, getting his team to overtime. And Anthony Miller was certainly a part of that, finishing with 11.3 FanDuel points. You had Allen Robinson uh, play yesterday, catch an awesome touchdown. And, and Anthony Miller still has his role, but you believe it's rising. How come? Yeah, he doesn't have his role. He has a better version of his role because in the past, Anthony Miller's gotten targets. He's gotten touchdowns. He's played decently well outside of some really bad drops, but he's had targets. That was never the concern. The concern was that he wasn't on the field all that much. And like we said with Gus Edwards, it's hard to score points from the sidelines. But thankfully, Anthony Miller got a pretty big role change in week number eight. He played 75% of the snaps in week number eight. That was his first time topping a 70% snap rate the entire year. And he ran a route on 85% of the team's pass plays, according to Pro Football Focus. That's really good and a pretty major deviation from where he was previously. And he, like you said, 11 targets for Anthony Miller, that's a really good number as well. So it's kind of like J.K. Dobbins. Previously, Anthony Miller, at least for me, was not a DFS consideration because he was not on the field. Now he is as a result of that role change he got in week number eight. They're facing the Titans in week number nine. They're going to be underdogs there. The secondary for Tennessee has had some major issues, and Miller is only $5,100. We've got Dalvin Cook. We've got Christian McCaffrey on the week nine slates. So we're going to want to spend up at running back. 
using a guy like Anthony Miller could make that a bit easier. So again, he was not in consideration before. He now is. Inherently, his stock is up. But I think that Miller, because we've seen him do well when he's gotten volume in the past, it's something I'm willing to trust here. Darno Mooney is not taking advantage of the volume he has gotten. Anthony Miller, at least more so than Mooney has. So I think that Anthony Miller is someone we should keep our eye on. It potentially could be a value play as early as week number nine. Being on the field certainly helps your chances of being in the lineup here over on FanDuel. Anthony Miller was finally on the field at a rate that we expected much earlier in the year. Darnell Moody not uh, taking advantage of the opportunity he, that he has gotten. So we go back to Anthony Miller, and hopefully he can be a bit of a dart throw, a cheap dart throw this week on FanDuel. You mentioned Christian McCaffrey's impending return. And it's finally here. Week nine, we are expected to get Christian McCaffrey back on the field. And that's good news for a multitude of reasons, but specifically for Carolina, where Mike Davis over the past few weeks has underperformed what he was doing when Christian McCaffrey got hurt. So now it's not like they're going to ease McCaffrey back in, we'd expect. He's going to go back and be full throttle, we hope. That's exactly the reasoning we wanted Chris McCaffrey in here is because, like you said, when Mike Davis first filled in, there was a lot of discussion about, hey, like maybe when McCaffrey comes back, we scale him back here to keep him healthier. But I think that's not as much of a factor now as it would have been then because Mike Davis just hasn't been as effective. I love Mike Davis. This is no, no shot at him. Christian McCaffrey is just good, and there is a gap between Christian McCaffrey and Mike Davis. If we look at the numbers overall this year, McCaffrey has a 46% rushing success rate according to number fires metrics, whereas Mike Davis is at 41%, so a five percentage point gap there. Davis about league average. McCaffrey a good, a chunk, good chunk above that. But it's also the big plays for McCaffrey that are that are the difference makers here because he averaged 0. 0.17 expected points per carry, whereas Mike Davis was at negative 0. 0.08. He was losing some fumbles. That definitely influenced things for sure and just couldn't quite get things going and get the big plays that McCaffrey is capable of generating. So initially when McCaffrey got hurt, there was some talk about Davis taking away carries, and maybe he will. But we know that Christian McCaffrey was back at practice this past week, which means he's not just flying back in. He, he was able to get in practice then, which means we should be able to expect him to have a relatively full workload in week number nine. It's a, a fun game against Kansas City. That defense has played really well so far this year, but I would expect McCaffrey to come back and have a workload similar to what he had before that injury. He scored 22 FanDuel points at least in both the first two games, and I kind of think we just see him jump back into at least somewhat like 90% of his previous role, and 90% of Christian McCaffrey is really good for fantasy. So Christian McCaffrey, I would say, because of the struggles this offense had in his absence, I think the stock is up for him. We should expect him to hit the ground running right away in Week 9. You mentioned it there, Jim. I think the important piece for Christian McCaffrey is the fact that he practiced last week and the Panthers didn't rush him back. And a lot of times we do see teams rush their star players back and they're just not effective when they get back on the field. So though Saquon Barkley last year with the Giants in a similar injury, here McCaffrey has taken his time. The Panthers have done the smart thing. And when he comes back, at least the hope is starting here in week nine, he's going to get his normal amount of carries, his normal amount of touches, and will he'll be as normal amount of effective this week as soon as he's back from injury. That's going to do it for us here on the FanDuel. Hurry up, Jim. We appreciate the time. Good luck this week. Same to you, Greg. Uh, I wish you as little stress as possible with the next couple of days, and we'll talk to you once again on Friday to, to preview week number nine. Breathe deep, Jim. This week, it's, it's just getting started. By Friday, we'll all be in the good place. So we hope. For Jim Sonis, I am Greg Sussman. Tomorrow, Tom Vecchio will join me as we take a look at DFS, the top value plays on the board for week nine and early look here tomorrow. For Jim Sonis, I am Greg Sussman. Thanks so much for watching. We'll do it all again tomorrow right here on the FanDuel Hurry Up.